to go first? Who wants to dive in? Louise, you have a dress back there. Ruth, Shalyn, several, I mean, Carolyn, lots of you are in your sewing room. So who's diving in? Mm. I mainly do belly dance costumes. Um, so they, they're like built a little bit differently, but thing is, is that the styles, because of the influence of the Russian designers, are going, they almost look like Latin dresses now. Yeah. Um, with the the mesh dresses, with the appliques on it, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So I'm kind of delving deeper into the stretchy mm -hmm. world, yes, the yes. lycra and the meshes and the power meshes and all that. So when you put in regular zippers and things like that, you usually stabilize the openings. How do you do this with the mesh in particular? Okay, I treat mesh and um, lycra the same way because they both stretch. And I'm going to, of course, take you into my sewing school because it's there. And then I can show you pictures and tell you that you could watch this video. <laughs> All right, so if I go into the sewing program, in the complete ball gown, the complete Latin skate, everything is released in the order in which I actually make the dress. So zippers are therefore after we do a fitting, after we do the alterations. And because um, stretch, we're putting zippers in stretch fabrics. I don't like to um, put interfacing or anything that would take the stretch out of it right? Because that defeats the purpose of having a stretch fabric. So you would never think that there could be this many topics that I would talk about with zippers, right? But this is everything that is on this page. And I will, um, I'll just scroll down. We'll just have a little conversation about zippers rather than me clicking the link that would take me to the image that I want to show you. So you have several options about where you put your zippers, ladies. I think this is super fascinating because in the old days it was always well you got to put the zipper in the center back why what if that doesn't fit your design what if it totally messes up your design because you have decorations all over your back so back zippers do not have to be centered all right in this particular picture i have two offset zippers and then one in the center now these are um, all during some stage of fittings. This is maybe a first fitting, this is a first fitting, and this is probably a second, a second fitting. But you don't have to limit yourself to just a center back zipper. Put it where it's most beneficial. There is a trick to getting in and out of side zippers because it can be a little bit difficult. So always, always with your zippers, ladies, and tell this to your clients also, always hook first, zip second. And when you're getting out of it, unzip it first and then unhook. Because the single worst thing that you can do or your clients can do to a zipper is zip it up partially and have all of this pressure from the stretch fabrics. The dresses are often tight on us, right? Then, and the zipper is going like that and is pulling apart at the teeth because it's not zipped up all the way and hooked. These are not jacket zippers. Jacket zippers or maybe metal trouser zippers, you can get by with leaving them unzipped, some partially because they're very heavy duty zippers. But the worst thing women can do to the zippers is if they get hot after dancing or skating and they unzip it partially, like I have in this picture, <laughs> um, you know, to let themselves air out and they sit down and they breathe and their rib cage expands everywhere. That zipper is going to be prone to breaking right here. The teeth are going to break off. Or if they get dressed like partially by themselves and then waddle down the hallway trying to find someone to finish zipping them. Again, the more times they do that, the more stress it is on the zipper, the more likely it is to break. So try to avoid that because it sucks having to replace a zipper <laughs> once you finish the dress and it's got all these rhinestones. So good zipper maintenance. Front zippers are also a really great place to put a um, 
I'll try to give you a link to this blog post. You can watch this if you want, but you can see on this red dress, there is a lovely stretch mesh backing. Why would you want to put a zipper up the center back? And on this particular dress, it is a standard ball gown. So they don't look at the front quite as much anyway, even though it's lovely. So front zippers are great for women who want to be able to get in and out of the dress themselves. And while we're here, let's talk about invisible zippers in general. So this is an invisible or a blind zipper. And you can see how poorly they rhinestoned this because invisible zippers, you can rhinestone all the way up to the zipper and it will still zip and unzip. So as you're decorating around a zipper, put your rhinestones as close as you can. So this is just, I photoshopped. I basically copied and pasted rhinestones and little appliques and, and finished filling it in with my photo editing software. But you can do this in real life. And then it camouflages the zipper beautifully. And as you were rhinestoning around your zipper, just take the pull tab every now and then and go up and down and make sure that you don't have a rhinestone too close. But you, because of the way that invisible zippers do this, you can rhinestone all the way up to the edge or even have the rhinestone hang over the edge a little bit, as long as it's not hitting the teeth. It's awesome. <laughs> Love that. Whereas with a regular zipper, you can't do that because the fabric on the regular, I mean, you can, but it never looks as good because the fabric isn't perfectly flat. Great first question. You had no idea it was gonna be this in depth, did you? <laughs> okay, zippers. Now to prep a zipper, this is actually going to answer your question. Whether, no, whether it's a one layer Lycra, a two layer Lycra, which you heard me talk about yesterday during the, the bonus dressmaker Q and A, or mesh or any stretch fabric, it doesn't matter, velvet, anything. I come in and I do a basting stitch, a straight basting stitch. So I have already fitted the dress. Once I cut it out and make it, um, I, I do not just put the zipper in because every fabric is different and will stretch different amounts. So you always have to do a, a fitting, at least one, before you actually determine where the zipper is going to go. Because you look at this, I have maybe three quarters of an inch or two centimeters seam allowance up the top Whereas down closer to the waist where the woman's spine starts curving in because our spine curves, right? Don't ever put a straight zipper in ladies because our spines are not straight. Our spines curve. They're like this, you know, several, we have an S curve for our spine. So your zipper needs to follow the natural human curvature, not this crappy pattern that your store-bought things give you, right? We talked about crappy store-bought patterns yesterday, Marianne hate those things. <laughs> so in module two, I teach you all how to make your own custom patterns. So once you have determined via fitting, not following your pattern, where the zipper curvature needs to go according to your spine or your client's spine, then you can come in and run a basting stitch, a straight stitch. And what this straight stitch does is it tells the fabric where to fold. And um, it also gives you a visual on where your zipper is going to be installed in this. So you're basically going to align, I'm pointing at the screen, you're going to align the teeth of the zipper right along this straight stitch. Okay, so it is a control issue, <laughs> which is good. We're controlling the fabric, right? And it is our visual guide. Does that make sense? Once you have done the zipper and once you put the zipper in, you have tried it on. Even if you just tried on the, the dress form, make sure it looks fine. Then before you start rhinestoning, you can come in and rip out this basting stitch. You can leave it there if it's not gonna show, but, or you could rip it out. Either one is fine. Uh, let's see how to change the neckline after the zipper is installed. We'll nix that, that doesn't necessarily answer your question. So if you are installing a regular zipper, this is how tidy this should look when it's all said and done. Super tidy. And as you are stitching, this is a 33 minute video on installing a zipper, ladies. 
because there are that many details when you're working with stretch fabrics. And do I have an invisible zipper? Do I have pictures of it? Okay, here we go. This one works. All right, so this here is a close up of where the straight stitch that I just told you you need to do to be your guideline. And then I'll come in and pin the zipper in because we're working with stretch fabric and a non-stretch item. So you have to pin it and stabilize it um, either up like regularly. This is probably about an inch or two and a half centimeters apart where my pins are. And the fabric is kind of perfectly flat along straight parts of the spine. On the spine, the part of the spine where it curves in, like in your low back where your lumbar vertebrae are, I start easing the fabric and or stretching the zipper. It seems like that wouldn't work. Freaking miracle. It works every time. <laughs> so, um, and then you can go back to doing perfectly flat like this. So does that make sense? Straighter areas of the spine, pin it just really perfectly flat. Don't let the fabric stretch out. And that's why you have to pin it because if you don't pin it as you sew it, the fabric is gonna go stretch, 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 stretch. And pretty soon the two sides of your dress align like that, <laughs> right? It sucks. So you're going to pin in both sides of the zipper at once before you ever start do I? Yes. Pin in both sides of the zipper and then make sure it's folded. Make sure your fabric where it meets at the top is no more than just a few millimeters off. A little bit is fine. And if it is more than, you know, a few millimeters off, then repin one side. Sometimes you have to do two sides when you're first learning so that they're really pretty close to. Because also if, um, it could be off two places. It could be off at the top or it could be off down at the bottom. Being off at the bottom is even worse because then it buckles. One side will buckle and have a little um, pooch in the fabric. Does this make sense? When it's all said and done. Super tidy. And as you are stitching, this is a 33 minute video on installing a zipper ladies, <laughs> because there are that many details when you're working with stretch fabrics. And do I have an invisible zipper? Do I have pictures of it? Okay, here we go. This one works. All right, so this here is a close up of where the straight stitch that I just told you you need to do to be your guideline. And then I'll come in and pin the zipper in because we're working with stretch fabric and a non-stretch item. So you have to pin it and stabilize it um, either up like regularly. This is probably about an inch or two and a half centimeters apart where my pins are. And the fabric is kind of perfectly flat along straight parts of the spine. On the spine, the part of the spine where it curves in, like in your low back, where your lumbar vertebrae are, I start easing the fabric and or stretching the zipper. It seems like that wouldn't work. Freaking miracle. It works every time. <laughs> so, um, and then you can go back to doing perfectly flat like this. So does that make sense? Straighter areas of the spine, pin it just really perfectly flat. Don't let the fabric stretch out. And that's why you have to pin it because if you don't pin it as you sew it, the fabric is gonna go stretch, 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 stretch. And pretty soon the two sides of your dress align like that, <laughs> right? It sucks. So you're going to pin in both sides of the zipper at once before you ever start, do I? Yes pin in both sides of the zipper and then make sure it's folded. Make sure your fabric where it meets at the top is no more than just a few millimeters off. A little bit is fine. And if it is more than, you know, a few millimeters off, then repin one side. Sometimes you have to do two sides when you're first learning so that they're really pretty close to, because also if um, it could be off two places, it could be off at the top or it could be off down at the bottom. Being off at the bottom is even worse because then it buckles. One side will buckle and have a little um, 
pooch in the fabric. Does this make sense? All right, you see this little poochy thing at the bottom here? Not great. Now this was not the original zipper. I made this dress for this lady and the zipper broke after a while because she is one of those people, she's 72, she might be 74 by now, who likes to zip up the dress as much or zip it up as much as she can. And then she has to find someone to help her finish getting zipped. She's the perfect person of what not to do with your zippers. <laughs> so of course the zipper broke after three or four years. And sometimes the zipper will last 10 years. Sometimes it will only last two months. You never know. And it is not your fault. And don't let your clients tell you that. Uh, oh, the one thing you do want to do when you buy a zipper, um, if you go to the store and buy a zipper, make sure that you test it so that as you are, um, before you actually buy it, go zip, 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 five or six times. And if it snags in any particular place, pick a different zipper. Um, if it's just sticky, that's okay. Sticky is not as long as it is consistently sticky because you can use a silicone spray on it or you can use um, zipper glide. I think um, silicone spray, here we go. I'm gonna, I, I think I've had some of my European sew, sewing school members tell me that they can't get um, I don't want to go to Amazon, that they can't get silicone spray. What am I looking for? The Nashes. Okay, here we go. They should have silicone spray. Here we go. And this stuff works great because you can spray your zippers. If your ironing board gets sticky, you can spray your ironing board. If I have threads that don't go through my sewing machine well, I go, I just spray all my bobbins. I just take my little, you know, you've got your bobbin case with the things lined up. I just take the silicone spray and spray them sometimes, turn it and spray them again. And that just keeps everything going through your machine really well, especially if you have threads that like to break. You know, like the thread doesn't feel rotten, but it does want to break. Silicone spray is, oops, sorry, <laughs> is great. The other zipper product you can get is like a zipper glide and it is more of a, a paste. This is awesome. Zippers are great because they are the key. <laughs> they are one of the things that help hold us together. do want you ladies to know this. I want to empower you to be the best dressmakers possible because when you are better at it, you can spend more time with your family. You can spend more time hiking or exercising or, or making a well-balanced meal. You can spend more time being a better you when you spend less time ripping stitches and crying <laughs> because it, the process is so stressful, right? I cried over many, 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 many dresses and cussed and just sat there and said, why in the bloody hell am I doing this? <laughs> and that is why I started the sewing school. And that is why I still bust my butt on this call and every day in the sewing school, making it what I wanted, what I needed, because I know what you ladies need. I've been there. I've been there. And there is pretty much nothing. If you decide to sign up and you know for the school, there is nothing that you will want for as far as dressmaking stuff goes. Because if it is not in the sewing school, I'm either in the process of adding it because it's something a lot of people ask me about, or we cover it in a Q and A session like this.